Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Lisa Bug Yoga for Hips, week three in the month of March 2024. And our focus is on hips, but we've I've also had some uh, requests to work on neck, which is, you know, we can actually tie in necks into what we do for hips. We're also working a bit on good posture. We can tie that into the hips as well as low back. So a lot of you have heard me mention this before, but I just want a little reminder that sometimes lower back problems are caused by tight hip flexors. So if we put our hands right here on our hips and we actually bring the, the lower part of this middle finger and the thumb towards each other and we flex at the hips a little bit, see what happens to my low back and I'm over exaggerating this. But sometimes when our hip flexors are tight, it brings us into this kind of lordotic curve a little bit more than usual. And it puts some pressure on those um, discs in the low back spine. So if we take this area and then lengthen it back out, we can tuck the tailbone slightly. And guess what? This area has a lot less tension in it. So we're going to be working on that focusing on tightening the glutes to release the hip flexors and sore low backs. I have a chair. I really would hope that you've got this for a couple of the things that we're going to work on today. If not, a block is fine. Um, access maybe to a wall is great as well. I have my yoga strap and a towel. Those can be interchanged for some of the things that we're doing. So as we begin our practice today, if you feel like you just to relax in a chair for the beginning part of class, feel free to have a seat and we're going to focus a little bit on range of motion for the neck and on activating our postural muscles. If you're standing, we're going to be working on balance a little bit and connecting with these muscles around the hip. So I just want you to stand with your feet about hips distance apart. And when I say hip distance, I mean if you find these frontal hip bones, they're called the ASIS or anterior superior iliac spines, that is where your thigh bone should go directly down. Sometimes when people say hips distance apart, you think about out here and then you start to take your feet wider. But let's bring them right in, descending down from the ASIS. And then we'll slightly tuck our tailbone under, and I don't want it a big one so you feel like you, you all went into this bad posture, but slightly tuck under. This is going to squeeze the glutes and fire your core a little bit. Let's just allow the arms to open out any amount. And then bring them in towards each other and exhale and push down. Now, as we do the push down, I want you to press your shoulder blades down toward the floor. So you're igniting these muscles right back here that connect with the shoulder blades. It's our latissimus dorsi muscles. And we want to find that connection with the lats. Because if our lats aren't working and connected, our shoulder blades are going to start to come up. So keeping them down and just letting your arms open out. Exhale, press those shoulder blades down. Let's do one more, breathe in. Shoulder blades descend. That's shoulder girdle depression. Now let's let the arms glide forward. About shoulders height or maybe a little lower. And then as you exhale, pull your elbows back and squeeze your shoulder blades together. But don't let your belly push out. So keep that tailbone tucked, keep your abs in, and then we'll inhale, bring the arms forward. Exhale, pull back, squeeze the shoulder blades. Now, as you do this and pull your shoulder blades back and squeeze, I also want you to press them down. So we already had that feeling of what it feels like to depress the shoulder blades toward the back pockets. And we're doing it now as the, at the same time, we're squeezing the tips of the shoulder blades together. Good 
Good, let's do one more. All right, we're gonna add some movement of the head. So we'll reach the arms forward, straight arms press down and back, get the shoulder blades down as well as squeezing behind you and look over your right shoulder. Then inhale as you look forward. Exhale, pull back, shoulder blades down, back, look over the other side. Now, sometimes when we start to turn our head, the shoulders want to turn that direction too. So as you look to the right, slightly pull your left shoulder blade back a little more. Those of you that have done my Pilates Reformer classes, Liz, you'll recognize this from when we're doing um, the straps pulling back and looking side to side. So I want you to imagine you have resistance in your hands and you're pushing back against a workload. And we've got this dynamic tension because as we're looking to one side, the opposite shoulder is slightly pressing back a little more. Let's get one more to each side. And then just relax your arms by your side. Good. Release any tension that you might be feeling. Kind of roll the shoulders a little bit. Loosen up. Sometimes we tense a lot of things as we're working on those finely tuned movements. Okay. Take your left foot slightly in front and your right foot slightly behind. And make sure you're still frontal hip bone distance apart. And your right heel is slightly up off the floor. Now, if you're feeling, ooh, this is a little tippy here, spread your feet apart a little wider, but hips distance apart is gonna be key here. Back heel is lifted. Take your left hand and either bring it to your hip, or if you can comfortably, slide it behind your back. So I'm just relaxing this shoulder a little bit. Take your right arm and hold it out to the side. Now what I want you to do is tense your right glute muscle. So right here, I want you to squeeze that. You're gonna feel a little release in the front of your hip. Hold that tension, then reach that arm a little higher if you feel comfortable. Take your hand across and give yourself a little neck stretch this way. And then lift and release it down. Good. We'll do two more of those. We'll lift the arm up. Now, if using the arm doesn't feel comfortable, then just keep your hand out and tilt your head. And then release it down. Are you still tensing this right glute? Let's do one more. And I'm not pulling. I'm just creating a little bit more length here with gentle pressure and releasing it back down. Very carefully bring your hand out from behind your back. And then step back into hips distance. Notice what you're feeling different from right to left side. And then we'll get into the other position. So your right foot slightly in front of your left. The left one's going to step back, still hip bones distance. And tense the glute, slightly tuck the tailbone under. And then we're going to bring this hand behind the back if that feels comfortable. If not, it just goes at the hip and you kind of pull this shoulder back. All right, if that's feeling good, this arm goes out to the side. And then we'll lift if that feels comfortable for your shoulder. We gently guide the fingertips and tilt the head. Still squeezing the left glute. And then bring it up, release it down, two more on this side. Make sure your abdominals are engaged. And if you feel pain in that right shoulder with your hand behind your back, then I want you to make adjustments. You might notice difference in range of motion on that lateral flexion of the neck from the right to left side. 
So just move that to a comfortable range. Let's do one more. Still squeezing the left glute. And up. And down. Okay, step that in. Very carefully slide the arm out. Loosen everything up. Just notice how you're feeling. And then if you have a towel or yoga strap, we're going to use that behind the back. So we'll take it a nice comfortable distance apart as we place it behind the back. So if your shoulders are really tight, you might wanna be wide on the towel to give yourself some range, or you can cinch it up a little bit. And the reason we're using this is I want you to pull out, like you're trying to rip the yoga strap in half, but not on a level 10 just about a three or a four so you're applying some outward pressure good now as we lift the arms up slightly drop your chin down towards your chest then lower the arms down as you come back to center now we're going to do different head movements each time the arms go back next time you lift the arms back look right Squeeze your shoulder blades now so it's not just your arms lifting. I want you to rotate your shoulders back. Release it, come back to center. If you need to adjust where your hands are on the strap or towel, please do so so it's comfortable. Now we'll look left as the arms come up. Now roll your shoulders together, squeeze back. Keep your abs engaged and your tailbone slightly tucked and release it last one each side is a side bend of the neck so as the arms go up we tilt side Ooh, that feels a little different right make sure it's comfortable and center that's what patanjali said in his uh Yoga notes was yoga should be comfortable. Hmm, that means a little different to all of us, doesn't it? Yeah, something to contemplate. And then release it down. Now, I don't want you to lift your head back. I want you to try to increase the length of the front side of your neck only without decreasing the back side of your neck. So as you lift, Elevate your chin a little. Roll your shoulders together a little more. And then relax it down. Beautiful. Release that strap. And we need to do a little counter stretch just briefly. You can lace your fingers together either keeping your palms towards you or maybe pushing away and just separate your shoulder blades. And we're going to do a half circle with the head starting to the right, rolling down to the middle, over to the left and back center. Two more, right, roll, left, center, one more right roll center and relax bring your hands in toward you if they're laced which finger is the top one i want you to switch that Whoop. that feels strange okay either palms facing you or pushing away open your shoulder blades tilt to the left drop the chin to the right and center two more around this way make sure your shoulder blades aren't shrugging up you want to keep the lats engaged and one more and then bring it in and release it down take the arms up Bend your elbows. You can clench a fist or keep open hands. Pull open. 
and then see if you can touch the palms and the elbows. Now, if they don't touch, that's okay. Just come to whatever range of motion you can. And we're moving the shoulders through horizontal or transverse abduction and adduction. Inhaling as we open, it's always nice. It helps us increase the breath and exhaling to press in. Okay, adding a little bit of balance. So remember when we stepped a foot back and we tighten the glute, I want you to step your right foot back. You're on the ball of the foot. It's not really far. Squeeze your glute, squeeze the shoulder blades down and back, and then step back in. Shift your body weight to the other side. Step back, squeeze, and come in. So the focus is tightening the back side muscle, the glutes, so you can release the front side muscle, that hip flexor. If you want to challenge your balance more, when your right foot steps back, you will look to the left. So be real careful with this, with your balance. Take your time, alternating sides. Working posture, hip flexor release, neck. We're rolling all of our special requests in, in this movement with balance for good measure. Let's do one more. Make sure you had yourself balanced. Once the left foot steps in, relax the arms down. Great, couple shoulder rolls, just loosen everything up. Okay, most of us know what an exercise called the clamshell is, but we're gonna be doing it standing on our feet. So I want you to have something to hold on for balance if you need to. We're going to be doing the right leg with the clamshell. So I'm gonna turn around. It'll look like my left because I'm opposing and mirroring you so I can put my hand on the wall. So I want you to lift your foot up behind you on your right leg and try to keep your knee down to the floor. So I don't want you to bring your knee forward. I want it to be in the same alignment with your opposite knee. And then what we're going to do with this is open our leg out and come back in. So this is a nice hip abduction. You might want to grab my chair here. So what I want you to notice, when I do this hip abduction, my knee and my foot are on the same plane, right? You can see that my foot is where my knee is. I'm taking it along with me. Now, instead of doing it that way, I just want you to let the knee come out. Now notice my foot stayed in place. So the knee's gonna go out and back in place. Let's do one more like that. So you've got the feeling Now take everything away, so your knee and your foot is in the same place, and then I want you to rotate your leg out, and then try to rotate it in. Ooh, so you'll see my foot is to the inside of my knee, and then it's gonna go to the outside of my knee. Make sure your knee hasn't come forward. I want it to stay in alignment with the other knee. Now, while you're doing this, tighten your glute. Ooh, we should be feeling this. Let's do two more on this side. Rotating out. You're probably feeling it in this standing leg as well. Make sure your knee is slightly softened. Then once your leg comes back to neutral, relax your foot down. Great, shake both of those legs out. I'm gonna bring my chair over to the other side so I can use it for balance. If you wanna turn around, you can do that. Um, if you don't have a chair, sometimes you can use a mop 
handle, just have something on the floor. It acts like a gondola pole. Okay, so let's bring the left knee to bend. Both knees are level. So my knee is not coming forward. I've got it back in alignment. And it doesn't matter how much you bend this knee. It can be a little bit, 90 degrees. Tuck your tailbone slightly and take everything out at the same time and back in. So this is hip abduction. It's just opening side with no rotation. Make sure you're breathing. You have that abdominal connection. Looking for good posture as you're standing. So just check that and fine tune. Now, without moving your foot, just rotate your knee out and center. Out. Keep contracting this glute here. Now take everything away so that you're abducted and we'll rotate the knee out so the foot is to the inside and then rotate the knee in so the foot is to the outside. This is external rotation of the femur or the thigh bone and internal rotation. We can also call this one lateral rotation and this one medial rotation. They're interchangeable words to describe which direction that you're rotating the thigh bone. Good, couple more. We're going slow, really feeling the muscles that are activating and the ones that are releasing. And once you bring it back to center, relax it down. Great, I'm just gonna move my chair back to the other side of the mat. Okay, so I'm gonna use this chair to help use as a prop for side angle pose and also for triangle, but you can also use a block or even if you don't have any props, I'll show you how to use your own leg to support. So let's face the chair. And then uh, let's take the left foot forward and then the right foot back and turn it out. And then turn your body this direction so that you can bend this front knee a little bit. We're in a teeny tiny warrior two stance. Now your hips might not be able to come all the way to face forward, that's okay but I wanna make sure that this knee is directly centered over the middle of the foot. And then we are just gonna take this hand and reach down toward the chair. Other shoulder is back. And then take this top hand, reach down toward the chair and open up your back and really give it a good stretch. Then like you're drawing a bow, an arrow, I want you to pull the top elbow back and really pull it back and look up to the ceiling. And then we'll reach down. Now, if you don't have the support of a chair, you can place your hand right here on your thigh, reach down and pull back. Okay, here's a little quiz. Which glute should be tightening to release which hip flexor? If you said the leg that's behind in the back, you would be correct. So I want you to tighten this glute, release this hip flexor, and stretch down and pull back. Let's do one more. Pull back and hold. Now this hand can just slide down to your hip if you want. It can stay pulling back. It can reach up to the ceiling, it can go over toward the ear. I want you to find a good stretch here. Excellent. Now as we lower this arm, we'll come up and relax. 
Good, now I'm just gonna turn to face the other direction. So you'll put the other foot in front, step back, turning the foot perpendicular in that small warrior two position. I'm gonna turn my back toward you. So I've got my torso squared. And then keeping this front knee bent, I'm going to reach down to support on the chair. And then this opposite hand as we rotate reaches down toward the chair. And you can make this feel like a little bit of a cat stretch. You can pull your abs in, round your back up a little bit, get a good stretch. And then as you draw the bow and arrow, pull the elbow back, look up to the ceiling. And then reach down. Now you can put the exhale here or the inhale. I just want you to be breathing whenever it feels like it works to your advantage with this. Now remember the back leg glute, we're gonna tighten that up a little bit so we have some lengthening in our hip flexor. And none of the lower body is moving. This is just rotation from the spine. The pelvis is really solid and firm. Good, let's do one more. As we pull back and hold, find a good stretch here. The hand can slide to the hip. It could even slide behind your back if you like that one we did earlier in class. Or we can reach the arm up or close to the ear. I really like this one. I just get a nice long stretch down the entire side body, still squeezing the back leg glute. Make sure you're not folded forward. You're really drawing the top shoulder back, turning the head. And then we'll lower that arm down, rising back up. And then stepping forward, let's just pause in a little mountain pose and just check in. Is everything feeling okay? You feel like you can take it one more level to triangle. So we'll do the other side again, stepping back, turning the toes out perpendicular. Again, this can be any width between your feet. We'll start with the front knee bent. You can have the hand on the thigh. Again, if you don't have a chair, keep the shoulder back and just get into this relaxed position. And all I want you to do is straighten and bend the front knee without changing anything else in your posture. So perhaps you're supporting here. You can lift the arm and we're just going to straighten and bend. Hand can be wrapped behind, straighten and bend. So essentially when we straighten, we're going into triangle. When we bend, we're in side angle. Now I want you to decide which one you would like to hold. So maybe you think, ah, the bent knee works best for me. I'll just hold that one. Or if you can hold the straight leg, we'll stay here and breathe. And of course you've got all of those options with that top arm. What we're looking for staying away from doing is rounding this down. So keep pulling that top shoulder back. You can look up toward the ceiling two breaths, tightening this glute, right? So releasing the hip flexor of the back leg. And then if you're in triangle with both legs straight with me, soften that knee and pull yourself up. Relaxing the arms, we'll turn to face forward and step it in. No rush to get right to the other side. I want you to pause and just notice what you're feeling. Good, bad, or indifferent. Just be really observant in your body in this practice. And then we'll go back with the left. Perpendicular with the feet. Turning our torso the other direction. We'll put a bend in the knee. We can support. And then we'll just go from straightening the knee to bending the knee. And if your feet aren't very far apart, front to back, this won't be a very big movement. The further your legs are away from each other, this is going to be a more of a range of motion 
as we bend the knee and as we straighten it. Pressing into all four corners of both feet. So we've got a really good pot of banda foot lock. And then decide which one you want to hold in. Do you want to hold side angle with the knee bent or triangle with the leg straight? And then we're just going to hang out there for a little bit. And then you can accessorize this pose any way you would like. Squeeze the back leg glute. If you're doing triangle with me, make sure the front knee isn't in a locked out position. There's just a softness, a micro bend. So we're not applying a lot of pressure to the ACL ligament. All right, if your front leg is straight, let's soften it again. Pull yourself up. And then step back to the top of your mat. Pause there in a little mountain pose just to observe and notice. And as you do, pull your shoulder blades back. Nice long spine. Okay, so remembering our standing clamshell. I'm going to give you the option to do this now in warrior three type of movement where the upper body is forward. So this is a great option to use your chair here. So what I want you to do is stand on your left foot, pick up your right and bend the knee maybe about 90 degrees. Now make sure your back isn't rounded or arched. I want you to really have a nice neutral spine. And then we're gonna press everything out. I'm gonna turn them around this way a little bit so you can see the angle. So my knee and my foot are going out at the same time and coming back in. So this is abduction. If we want to get rotation, what we need to do is leave our foot where it is and then just turn the knee out. So now you can see my foot's there and come back in. So let's do a few of those. If this isn't working, being in this forward position, then you can stand up and do the one we did before. So we're rotating into that clamshell, coming back in. One more. Then take everything away so you're in abduction and we're going to rotate the knee out and the knee in. And I have on this leg a lot more mobility to go in than I do to go out. So I'm really listening to my hip to say, okay, right there's good enough. And then right there's good enough. Let's do two more. You're still connecting with your glute or your leg would fall down, right? So we're keeping it up as we're rotating laterally or externally and medially or internally. Then come to center. You can either stand up if you want or straighten your leg back and then see if you can lift maybe one hand off the chair or maybe both. If you lift one hand, lift the hand that's opposite of the leg that's back. And that's going to give you a standing bird dog. Okay, let's lower the hand, lower the foot. We need to take a break from being in this position, so stand back up. Wiggle, waggle, and loosen everything up. This is part of yoga too, right? Yeah, we don't have to be just always in a pose. We can take some time to loosen up. Okay, let's try the other side. So the right foot will be on the floor. Hips are squared off. We'll hinge forward to put our hands down on the chair. Then we are going to bend the knee of the left foot any amount, and your knees are connected then open everything out to the side. So your foot's gonna go along with it. We'll do a few in hip abduction here. Check to make sure your head is in a nice neutral position. 
I mean, if you need to glance up every once in a while and look at the screen, that's okay to come out. But when you're really focusing on your position and alignment, keep that head neutral. Now, instead of hip abduction, let's do your rotation, a clamshell. So keep your foot where it is and just rotate your knee out and in. Or I should say out and to neutral. Because the way we have it now, you can't really internally rotate too much. Then let's go to the final one. So abduct everything out away from you and hold and rotate the knee out. So your foot's going to go in. Rotate the knee in so your foot's going to go out. And as Patanjali said, it should be comfortable. So don't force this to where you feel pinching or pain. If you want to go back to doing this standing, it's another great option. It just puts gravity in a different spot for us. So it is working the muscles differently to be um, parallel to the mat with your upper body. Let's do one more to rotate the knee up and to rotate the knee in. I'm pretty balanced on this side. Then back to center. If you need to take a break, take it or extend the leg long. You can keep both hands down or maybe pick the right hand up or maybe try taking both hands off your chair and holding warrior three. Standing bird dog, spinal balance. One of our longevity exercises. Okay, that feels good for me on that side. If you're ready to come out, let's do that as well. Come on up, give everything a little bit of a shake. Ooh, how are we doing? Are we ready to go down to the floor? All right, sounds good. I think I am as well. Now, if you have your chair here, I'm going to give you the option of doing some bridging with your feet on the chair. What's the benefit of that? It's going to allow you to lift your hips up a little higher. Is that a big deal? Well, maybe, maybe not. For me, it's more of a big deal to my ego. <laughs> I can say, oh, look how high I can go up when on the floor I can't come up very high. Um, do we need to bring our ego to a yoga class? Well, I don't know. Really not, but sometimes it's just more satisfying to do something a little bigger. So if that's you, then I want you to bring your feet to the chair. And I'm going to do that as well. So what we want to do is be close enough so that our heels are on the chair, not our entire lower leg. We have our feet about that hips distance apart. ASIS, or your feet are down on the floor. It's fine as well. We are just going to tuck the tailbone under. So my back didn't come up off the floor yet, but I am squeezing through the glutes and I'm pressing my lower back down into the floor. And then reverse that. So tip your pelvis the other way and try to lift your low back a little bit up off the mat. So I've got a little space under my back. I'm going to do that a couple times. Tuck under, push down, and release, and tilt your pelvis the opposite way. One more. Tilt, push down. That's called a posterior tilt. And then go the other direction, anterior tilt. Then tuck into your posterior tilt, push down and roll your back up off the mat. Woohoo! look how high we can come up when feet are on the chair. But again, it's not a big deal. It's just kind of fun to come up a little higher. And then roll back down and then release that tilt to the pelvis. Let's do two more like that. Tuck under, push the low back down, roll up. And roll down. This is called a rolling bridge. Tilt the pelvis the other way. Inhale. 
exhale, tilt and press, roll up. And then roll back down. And then just come to a neutral spine. So for me, neutral means there's a little bit of space under my back because that's the way my back is shaped. If you have a flat back, you might not feel much space behind your leg. Okay, so we'll do our figure four stretch from here. And I do like using the chair for this as well. So let's take the right foot, place the ankle across the thigh. Now I want to add a little bit of rotation of the knee. And if it's difficult for you to do this with your ankle on your thigh, you can have your leg up and free. But I want you to use the muscles of your hips to try to rotate your knee out and then bring it back in a little bit. So this is what it's gonna look like with my foot not connected to my thigh. If I have my foot connected, then I'm pushing my knee out and then I'm bringing it back in a little bit. So the foot is not moving. It is just at the hip joint. I want your foot to be flexed so we're not putting any pressure on the knee joint as we do this. Let's do one more, push the leg away Then just relax it so it's in a place where you can just hold and breathe. Or we can pull the legs up towards us any amount, holding our figure four stretch. So if you're kind of into making this a little bit restorative, then just let your foot find the mat and just relax here. Close your eyes, breathe, allow the stretch to be just nice and gentle and comfortable. If you want to get deeper in, then let's pull it in. Not to the point where you're feeling tension, but just a deeper stretch. Let's take one more breath or you can pause the video later on YouTube. I'm gonna give a shout out to our community member, Esther. She's not live with us today, but hi, Esther. I know she's gonna watch it later tomorrow on YouTube. So we're thinking about you, Esther. All right, let's come down and then relax. So either both feet are on the floor or they're both up on the chair. Just notice, what do you feel? And then we can move, no rush. Bring the other knee up to cross or keep it free. And then we're just gonna use our muscles to rotate the knee out and in without really moving the foot. Rotate out. If that ankle's connected to the thigh, it does give you a little bit more stabilization to rotate with the muscle. Exhale, rotate. Is there a difference between right and left side? Definitely for me. Pain-free range of motion, one more. Then just relax it wherever it's gonna land and either stay here for a restorative stretch or allow those knees to come in. You can use your hands to assist. You could use a yoga strap or your towel to assist. You can maybe place it behind your leg and then pull up. Oh, that's great. I really like that. Or you can use the strength of the bottom leg to push the top leg forward. Make sure this left ankle is flexed and you don't feel any pressure in your knee on your left side. One more breath. A complete exhalation. And then we'll relax down, uncrossing, 
either both feet on your chair or both feet to the floor. So we can leave our feet down either on the floor or on the chair, but we are going to dorsiflex our ankles. So we'll pull them up and then lower them down, pull them up, lower them down. It's done equally as fine with feet on a chair or on the floor. Might be a small range of motion if your Achilles tendons are tight. We can also do this in legs up the wall. So we can bring both legs up, pull your toes down and back to relaxed. Pull down, back to relax. So when we pull down, we're holding this activation of the shin and then we're just releasing it. Our calves get a lot of work. The front of our shins, not so much. And if these muscles get weak, what can happen when we're walking? We can stub our toe and trip. And so we need to have the muscles really strong that pull the toes up. So when you're walking, you don't stumble especially if you're walking over uneven surfaces. Maybe you're on a trail and there's some tree roots or rocks. It's very easy to trip and stumble. So let's work that two more times. Pull and release. One more pull and release. Good. All right, we're going to come back down. Feet can go to the chair again or all the way to the floor. And we're just gonna let our knees open up like a little butterfly. I do like this on the chair. So if you haven't tried it before, what's gonna be different? It's the position of your back. So when my feet are all the way down on the floor and I open my knees up, my lower back can want to lift and it can put a lot of pressure there. If my feet are up a little higher, then my pelvis stays more neutral I can relax the low back and this feels very comfortable. Now activate the hips on both legs and try to push the knees apart and then relax. Push the knees apart and relax. And maybe they're barely moving, but you're feeling a muscle tightening in the outer part of your hip. Let's do about three more of those pushing apart and relax two more good one more time press apart and relax now if this feels pretty comfortable and you want to stay here a, a nice long duration. I'm all for that. So give yourself the option just to remain as you are. If you'd like to do one leg at a time, this is like a reclined tree pose. So we can take one leg and if you're using the chair, you can actually slide it under your chair. And then I'm keeping the straight leg vertical with my toes up like I'm standing on my foot. I'm letting the other leg just drape open. You can do this without the chair as well. So you've got maybe your left foot to the inner thigh of your right or the opposite. We're just going to hang out here for a few breaths. And then if you'd like to work on some posture for the upper body, we all do. Then I want you to take your hands like they're in prayer position and then open See if your hands can come all the way down to touch the floor or the mat and your elbows too, and just relax there. For some of you, that might be a huge stretch. For some, maybe you don't feel anything. It's just a nice heart opener here. If that doesn't feel okay, then lower your elbows down a little bit or straighten your arms all the way out like airplane arms. Or you can even reach your arms up a little higher. 
if you want to make this restorative, it's kind of nice to put your arms on two little pillows or two towels and just relax. Stay here a couple more breaths. Allow this to feel comfortable. And then I'll let you choose how you'd like to move to the other side. Maybe this open knee needs to come in first and then the other leg needs to slide up. And then switching to the other side. Hmm. And maybe the other side, you have to do it differently because of any limitations you might have. And that is fine. Or maybe you're still staying in both. You've been there quite a while and it's feeling great. You're feeling some nice release through those muscles. And then let's find a little bit of a postural stretch opening up the front of the shoulders and the pecs. Once you get into your pose, just try to soften everything. So there's no gripping or tightening of any muscles anywhere. Just really surrendering to this restorative posture. Perhaps we focus on our breathing. Maybe not changing it, but just noticing how our body's breathing for us. Usually that's just what we need. Or we can alter it a little bit by making the breath deeper and longer and fuller. And maybe opening the mouth, just sighing to let it all go. And whenever you feel you've had time to balance on both sides or give this side adequate attention, you can decide how you'd like to come out of this pose and then make your way to a comfortable seat. That might be in your chair, might be seated on the floor. Simple cross leg pose, easy pose, And just check in, eyes can be closed. And let's pull those shoulder blades back, press them down, make your spine long and all sides of your neck equal in length to the degree that you can. We'll press our palms in Namaste at heart center, the thumbs touching the sternum, creating a bond, and the light and joy that reside within me honors the light and joy in each of you. Namaste.